As we watch crowds gathering for the March on Washington, I want to bring in filmmaker, director Spike Lee. Uh, Spike, thanks for being with us. I'm wondering, as, as you see this March on Washington, we should note that it's not only the 57th anniversary of the original march, it's also the 65th anniversary of Emmett Till's uh, murder. What do you make of, of events like this? How important is, is something like this? Well, Anderson, I first want to apologize that my face is not lit, but we got to, maybe it's uh, symbolic. You know, we're not seen. I thought you had planned this lighting for that particular reason. <laughs> I'm a filmmaker. I should know about it. But anyway, <laughs> and, and Anderson, uh, 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 no, all jokes aside, I want to thank you for having me again. And how many times have I been a guest in your show, you know, after someone black or brown has gotten shot now? And, and just looking at the footage of uh, Mr. Jacob Blake's son saying how his son, who was shot seven times in the back, Paralyzed and weighed down, his ankles are shackled to the hospital bed, and that I right away I think about that's what they did to. That's what the slave catchers did. Where my ancestors, if you got caught, the least thing they did was put shackles on your ankle. And one of your producers, Anderson, told me that so far, our brother, King Jacob Blake, has not been charged with anything. If he has not been charged with anything, why in the world is he shackled to his bed, hospital bed like he's an animal? My question to the authorities in Kenosha, has Kyle, is, I know he's been arrested, but is Kyle Wittenhouse, is he in shackles? 17 years old, shot two protesters, killed two protesters, and maimed another one. And I saw footage, Anderson, my brother, CNN, CNN, after he shot three people, killed two, he's walking the streets and armed vehicles and jeeps pass by him. And it's after he sh shot that semi-automatic weapon. After. Let me ask, I want to ask you a question. Imagine the same scenario but a black man has a semi-automatic rifle in all the chaos was happening in Kenosha. Do you think that armed vehicles and jeeps are going to ride right, get, <laughs> right by a black man? I'm wearing laughing because it's so crazy. There's actually video, uh, it's a cell phone camera video, and I, 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 it's on social media. I, we can't independently verify it. Uh, but it does show a police vehicle uh, communicating with Stop some roll. of the, the armed uh, white uh, people who had come to, in their words, maintain order or defend property, uh, even giving them water or trying to get, get them water and thanking them for what they were doing. It does seem, you know, this is two days after or even one day after the McCluskeys were at the RNC and treated basically like heroes for Hero. brand, brandishing weapons at Black Lives Matter protesters who were just walking by their house. I would also like to say, Anderson, again, thank you for having me. I really want to, you know, pray some blessings to the family and then... This is very important. When our brother Jacob was shot in the back seven times, his three sons were in the back seat. 
And they're going to have to live with this trauma all their lives. They saw their father shot seven times in the back. And let's hope he lives, but he's never going to be able to walk again. And, and, and Anderson, there is so much hate in the world, specifically the United States of America. And Doc Rivers, the great coach of L.A. Clippers, was so on the money with this remark. We love this country. We love the United States of America. But the United States does not love us back. From the very first person to die for this country, Christmas Attucks in the Boston Massacre, the very first person to die for this country was a black man. And we have been fighting, putting our lives lines for every single war for the promise to be recognized as human beings and full citizenship. And here we are in this dreadful year, 2020, and black and brown people Black and brown trans people are being shot down like animals, like it's all right. And this guy in the White House and what he's done and what this just level of hate, Anderson, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking. I don't and know. I pray to you... God. I pray to God this guy's out November third. And also, I like to bring this up. And you, I think you've talked about this too. I have. I think there's going to be some shenanigans, some skullduggery. That if he loses, particularly in, in a close vote, he's he, he might not want to leave. And I know they say, well, by law and all this other stuff later for that. You know, are, are we? Anderson, are we coming to a civil war, the next civil war in the United States of America? I ask you that question. Do you, do you worry about that? Anderson, I can't, I can't have a restless sleep. I mean, this let, constant rerun, me, me, this constant rerun of black and brown people being murdered, shot down for no other reason because of their skin. This, let, me this ask, is, uh, let me ask you, at the, at the, at the, at the RNC this week, um, you know, look, all conventions for any political party is propaganda. People, you know, Democrats and Republicans put on the best face possible. Um, but we did see a real effort by this administration at the RNC to appeal to particularly black men and not so much black women, but, but, but black men, a lot of speakers, uh, and the administration says, look, criminal justice reform, there were positive steps made toward that. Actually, you know, Spike, Breonna Taylor's mom is about to speak, so um, I just want to l- listen in. Look. I li- want to look, listen to what I'm she says. I'm here want to come back to me, but, but of course, please go, please go. Okay, take care, Spike. Uh, let's go, let's listen in. 